In this video, we're just going to quickly look at a theorem about sequences and then apply it to a couple examples. So the idea is that we have some convergence sequence a n. Remember, if the limit of a n goes to some finite value, then we would say the sequence a n converges to that value. And then we consider a function that's well behaved at that value l, so it's continuous there. And if it's continuous at L, then I can say the limit of F of a n is going to go to F of L. And that's exactly the same thing as saying that the sequence F of a n converges to F of L. So it's probably easier to understand this if you just look at a couple of simple examples. So number one, investigate the convergence of the sine of 1 over n and its embraces. So I mean the sequence of this thing. So we test convergence by looking at the limit. And what we're, what we're going to focus on first is the limit of those interior pieces, those 1 over n's. And I can say the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n is equal to 0. All right, so that's the first piece of the theorem. And then I say, OK, what's my outer function? This is the sine function. Is it continuous at 0? Yeah. So I can say sine of x is continuous at x equals 0. Therefore, we can say the limit as n goes to infinity of f of a n, so this is the sine of the 1 over n's, is going to be equal to the sine, this piece here, f of l, which was 0. And the sine of 0 is 0. So we just showed that the sequence converges to 0. Let's look at another example. The outer function here is the square root function which is going to be continuous just about everywhere. Um, you wouldn't want to butt up against x equals 0 with it. And again, I'm going to look at the limit as n goes to infinity of the interior pieces, so 3n plus 5, all divided by n minus 2. If I do this in the, the more formal style, then I would have to divide the top and bottom of that rational expression by n, and I get 3 plus 5 over n over 1 minus 2 over n, and then we apply the limit to each of those terms in the numerator and denominator, and these two go to 0, and I'm left with 3 over 1, or 3. Next, I ask myself, is the square rooting function continuous at x equals 3? Yeah, no problem. Therefore, the limit of f of the ans will be equal to f of the limit of the ans. In other words, the square root of 3, and we're done. 